So we just talked about when you include negative numerators. What happens when you have negative denominators? Well, there are four cases, and I plan to go over each in the following slides. The first one is when you have two positive numerators. The numerators do not have to have the same value, but they must both be positive. The next case is when you have a positive numerator and a negative numerator. The negative numerator does not need to have the same value as the negative denominators, but they all must be negative, except for the first positive numerator. Then for the third example, we have a negative numerator and a positive numerator. Again, the negative numerator does not need to have the same value as the negative denominators, but all except for the second numerator needs to be negative. I guess that I do not need to go over this third example because a plus b is equal to b plus a, which means that if you have one number and add another number to it, that will be equal to the second number plus the first number. Basically, if you have two numbers and add them, it doesn't matter in which order you add them. So I don't need to go over the third example, but I plan to do so anyway. The fourth example is when you have every numerator and denominator negative. The numerators do not have to be equal to each other, and they do not have to equal the denominators. But all numerators and all denominators have to be negative. You may have noticed in these four cases that each one of them has both denominators negative. Why is this the case? Well, when you add two fractions together, they need to have the same denominator for you to add them together. Why is that the case? Well, I plan to go over an example of where it does not work at the end of the set of videos. Let's go over the first case. We already know that if you include negative numerators but have positive denominators, it goes like so. You add the numerators, but you keep the denominators the same. So we can figure out that negative 5 thirds plus negative 8 thirds is equal to negative 5 plus negative 8 over 3. There is a rule that negative divided by positive is negative. I explained this in a previous set of videos. And if you want to know why negative divided by positive is negative, a link is in the description of this video if you are curious. But anyway, back to this example. Because negative divided by positive is negative, I can say that negative 5 thirds is equal to negative 5 thirds. I can also say that negative 8 thirds is equal to negative 8 thirds. On the right side, I use an aspect of distributive property. I explained this aspect of distributive property as part of a previous video. The link for that video is also in the description of this video. But anyway, this means that negative 5 plus negative 8 is equal to negative parentheses 5 plus 8. On the left side, I use the rule that positive divided by negative is negative. That means that negative 5 thirds is not only equal to negative 5 thirds, but is also equal to 5 over negative 3. Likewise, negative 8 thirds is not only equal to negative 8 thirds, but is also equal to 8 over negative 3. On the right side, I used the previous rule again that negative divided by positive is negative. 
So I get on the right side negative parentheses of that whole fraction 5 plus 8 over 3. And then on the right side, I use the second rule again that positive divided by negative is negative. So what I'm left with in the final equation that if you have negative denominators but positive numerators, you add like you add the fractions like so. You add the numerators but keep the denominators the same. This is the first way of showing is showing why this is the case for this first case. <laughs> the second way is very similar to the first way and let me now talk about that way. We already know that if we add two fractions like so, positive numerators, positive denominators, it goes like so. Add the numerators, keep the denominators the same. From that equation, we can take the negative of both sides, and each side should still equal the other. Distributed property on the left. The rule that positive divided by negative is negative on the right. Using that rule again on the left, and we're left with the same final equation as in the first way. This is way number two. Let's now go over the second case where you have a positive numerator and a negative numerator. First, we know that if you include negative numerators but have positive denominators, you add like so. You add the numerators, but you keep the denominators the same. Therefore, we can know that 5 thirds plus negative 8 thirds is equal to 5 plus negative 8 over 3. Because negative divided by positive is equal to negative, we can know that negative 8 thirds is equal to negative 8 thirds. We're moving the minus sign from the numerator to the left of the fraction. On the right side, for its numerator, we are using the distributed property. Then on the left side, we are using the rule that negative divided by negative is positive. That means that negative 5 over negative 3 is equal to 5 thirds. On the right side, we are using the rule that negative divided by positive is negative. We are moving the minus sign from the numerator to the left of the fraction. And then we move the minus sign from the left of the fraction to the denominator. So that's how to add two fractions that have a positive numerator and a negative numerator, but both of them have negative denominators. You add the numerators, but keep the denominators the same. Let's now talk about the third case, where we have a negative numerator and a positive numerator. We already know that if we include negative numerators, but still have positive denominators, you add fractions like so. You add the numerators, but keep the denominators the same. Therefore, we can know that negative 5 thirds plus 8 thirds is equal to negative 5 plus 8 over 3. Because negative divided by positive is negative, I can know that negative 5 thirds is equal to negative 5 thirds. On the right side, the numerator on the right side was using the distributed property to get from negative 5 plus 8 to negative parentheses 5 plus negative 8. On the left side, we use the rule that positive divided by negative is negative. That means that negative 5 thirds is not only equal to negative 5 thirds, but it's also equal to 5 over negative 3. Additionally, negative divided by negative is positive. That means that negative 8 over negative 3 is equal to 8 thirds. On the right side, we use the rule that negative divided by positive is negative. We move the minus sign from the numerator to the left of the fraction. 
and then we moved it to the denominator because positive divided by negative is also negative. So that's how you add fractions when you have a numerator that is negative and another numerator that is positive, but both of them have negative denominators. You add the numerators but keep the denominators the same. Let's go over our final case when you have negative denominators. First, we know that if you add two fractions with positive numerators, positive denominators, it goes like so. Add the numerators, keep the denominators the same. Therefore, we can know that 5 thirds plus 8 thirds is equal to 5 plus 8 over 3. We also know that negative divided by negative is positive, which is used heavily in the second line. That means that negative 5 over negative 3 is 5 thirds. Negative 8 over negative 3 is 8 thirds. Negative parentheses 5 plus 8 over negative 3 is equal to 5 plus 8 over 3. And then we use a distributive property on the right side. So this is our last case when you have negative numerators and negative denominators. How you add fractions still works. Add the numerators, keep the denominators the same. And this is our last case for when you have negative denominators. The next video in the set of videos is about the first example of when you include non-integer numerators to explain why you add fractions in a certain way for this specific case. If you would wish, feel free to click on this link.